Have you ever felt really insignificant? I don't know about you, but the chaos in the world right now makes me feel a little bitty, itty, bitty, bitty small. The good news is, Jesus loves me, Matt LaFay, the person. He doesn't just love me as part of the body of Christ, even though I am. He loves me. Let's jump into it. Hey guys, welcome to another video. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Matt LaFay. If it's your first time visiting my channel, I encourage you to check out the rest of my content. I do a lot of music, but I do a lot of chats too. My wife and I have a segment here called the Matt and Kayla Show. And if it encourages you and you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. If it's not really your thing, just ignore me. It's okay. I'm cool. I'll get over it. So the basic gist of what I'm going to be talking about today is getting down to this. The realization literally just hit me a couple weeks ago. I need you to go upstairs, baby. I'm, I'm in the middle of a video. Good job, princess. My daughter interrupted me to show me that she had just blown a bubble with her bubble gum. Really nice. It's actually a really good bubble. I was jealous. I can't do that. Anyway, so a couple weeks ago, I was sitting there kind of feeling sorry for myself and a little bit of a pity party because the world's gone to crap. It's really, really great. Good job. Sometimes you can feel so isolated. Even myself, I have a, an amazing family. My wife, Kayla, my kids, Kate and Amaya. Even with my amazing, beautiful family that God has given me, surrounding me, you can feel alone and you can feel isolated and maybe insignificant and I'm sure some of you if not a lot of you can resonate with what I'm saying right now so I've been reading through the book of Jeremiah and if you want a roller coaster of emotions and some really cool storylines and actually some backdrop to the Old Testament anyway go through the book of Jeremiah and dig into it. it's really cool what hit me is the way that God talks to Jeremiah directly to Jeremiah he talks to Jeremiah directly about what's going to be happening to Israel, to Judah, when the Babylonians take over and what they should do, what they shouldn't do. So basically that's all I'm going to say about that. Dig into it if you want to hear more. But the cool part is that really hit me. God talked to Jeremiah directly. You can see this countless times in the Old Testament and the New Testament too, but most, like a lot in the Old Testament where God has a message for his people. And he goes to a prophet, uh, like the prophet Samuel, for example, you know, people like that. And it's really neat and really, really encouraging to see that God has a one-on-one -on -one relationship with these people and that he wants to work through one person or a multitude of people over the series of the Old Testament. The first big one that really jumped out to me was Abraham. You know, the guy we sing a song about. Father Abraham had many sons. Father Abraham, yeah, he had many sons. And I am one of them. Let's dig into Genesis 13, 14 to 15. It says, The Lord said to Abram, after Lot had parted from him, Look around from where you are to the north and south and to the east and west. All the land that you see I will give to you and your offspring forever. Two things pop out. One thing, God is talking to Abram or Abraham. It was changed later. Really neat, right? Cool stuff. Another thing is he's talking to him about something that is not only going to prosper the land, but is actually going to prosper Abraham in his own well being. Hi, baby. I'm in the middle of a video. Welcome to my life. Welcome to my life. So an old simple plan there. Anyway, we see proof here that God had a one on one relationship with this dude called Abraham. He cared what happened to him, and all Abraham had to do, it's easy because I can see the storyline, but all he had to do was trust and obey God which at that time really seemed like a big deal because Abraham's story is like all over the place. It's crazy, but read it. Just read it. You can do it! It's in Genesis. So I believe in this crazy, unprecedented time that God has a plan for you, a plan for me. And when I say you, I don't mean it as the body of Christ, the plural. I mean it singular as in you, whoever's watching this right now. Literally my whole life growing up, I grew up in church, and I viewed the gospel and what Jesus accomplished on the cross as something that was made for the masses. I seen what he did was for Christians, not realizing that that actually includes me and that includes you too. When you get that realization in your head, and do you know what, some of you already have it and some of you are probably saying, Matt, this is common sense. You know what, for a lot of people it isn't. It really isn't. For me, it, took, it literally took me years. I'm almost 33. It took me almost 33 years. But now I see the good news as good news for this guy. We're here. 
have any more shirts. Just joking. But seriously, it's for me, it's for you too. Paul the Apostle, we see that God had a personal relationship with him. Not only did Jesus reveal himself to Paul on the road to Damascus, transforming Paul into like this mighty warrior super Christian and writing over half the New Testament, but God continued to reveal things to Paul throughout his ministry. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I hope that you find that encouraging, that Jesus Christ himself wants to have a personal relationship with you. Obey. Trust him. Take him at his word. His word is life. His word is truth. He's not lying to you. He's, try he's not trying to, to trick you into anything. He actually wants to give you full life. Not this fake counterfeit version of true life and real life that the world offers through literally everything. John 16, 33. I love this one. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Straight from Jesus himself. So can we apply this belief system to ourselves as Jesus followers? Of course we can. For sure we can. Scripture continually backs this up. Romans 8, 17. Let's read it. Now if we are children, then we are heirs. Heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share in his sufferings in order that we may also share in his glory. What's that telling us? That's telling us that we've been adopted by God. We're his children and we're entitled to what he has. Nice. I have been chosen by Almighty God. Matt LaFay, Matthew Joel LaFay, born on October 11th, 1988, has been chosen by God for such a time as this. And, and you, the viewer, you have been chosen by God Almighty to be in this era of time. Jesus died a gruesome and unwarranted death on a, on a Roman cross for you. If you want to know more about God, comment in the comments below. If, you, if you're just new to this faith, pop me a comment, email me, whatever it takes. I will, I will work one-on-one -on -one with you. Not a problem at all. I will answer any question you have. If this is helping you in any way, I encourage you to hit the like button, even share it, because the more that you interact with this video, comments, likes, it actually goes to more people too, which is really cool. And also, I have a video I released a few months ago presenting the question, should Christians watch TV and movies with nudity in them? As always, I hope this encourages you, and I hope you'll check out some of my other content. Subscribe if you haven't. God bless. Check out the video right here.